Hey, this is Michael Pena with Teens Wanna Know, and today we're here at a benefit gala for education through music. Education Through Music Los Angeles held its 8th annual benefit gala, honoring award-winning composer John Debney, who scored such films as Iron Man 2 and Bruce Almighty. Also honored was veteran school teacher Christine Damore from the Burbank Public School System. The nonprofit organization works with underserved schools to provide music education as part of the core curriculum. Their goal is to enhance academic achievement, creativity, and overall development for every child. Teens Wanna Know attended the event and spoke with some VIPs, including Master of Ceremony Ed Helms from The Office and The Hangover Trilogy. Here are some of the highlights from this special night. All the money that raised tonight will go directly to ETMLA. I say all, I should point out there is a small matter of my speaking fee, which is $300,000. <laughs> Opinion, why is music education such a vital part of school curriculum? Well, when kids learn about music, they're learning obviously about music itself, which is a wonderful, important thing, but it also impacts the way kids learn other subjects, math and reading and concentration and all these, it just has a, a, an incredible effect on the development of a kid's mind. And I was lucky enough to have a lot of music in my school growing up and my family was very musical. And I just think it's, uh, I mean, as you can hear behind yeah. us, <laughs> music is very important. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about the Lonesome Trio. Oh, Lonesome Trio, that's, uh, that's a uh, bluegrass trio that started in, when I was in college. I went to Oberlin College in Ohio, and uh, three of us just started playing music, and we've been playing music ever since. And we uh, we just recorded an album, so maybe maybe that'll happen soon. Cool. Well, now it's time for our time machine question. All right. If you could travel back in time and give one piece of advice to your teen self, what would it be? Practice the guitar more. Because I'm like a decent guitar player, but I wish I was a great guitar player. Yeah. Actually, let me take that back. I would say relax. You're a pretty cool kid and go ask out Callie Goodwin. Do it. Yeah, that's what I would have told myself. Because <laughs> I found out later she had a crush on me and, and I didn't ah. know it was a whole disaster. <laughs> so. Tonight is really a wonderful event. I'm, I'm so humbled that I'm being honored. But I think the bigger thing for me is that we're able to, with this organization, help young kids get exposed to music at a very young age. And in many schools, there are no music programs anymore. So this organization is so great that we work uh, very hard to try to get instruments in kids' hands, and music teachers uh, in, in a school. And so I think it's just a, a critically important thing, and I'm delighted to be here tonight. Music teaches you creativity, imagination, and all those kinds of things. And that the other classes don't do the arts are really a critical part of all our lives. And music is a critical part of all our lives. And the more you know about, the more you know about it, and the more you understand it, the more you enjoy it. Speaking from personal experience, middle school and high school would have been very tricky for me had there not been such amazing music, art, and yeah. drama classes for me. So I, I just feel like it provides such a difference in any student's life, and it's so important to keep it in the schools because, I don't know, I mean, you can be an athlete too, yeah. but it's also nice to have arts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So now, The Office ended earlier this year. What would you say has been the funniest moment working on the set? Okay. I maybe wet my pants once, and that was actually not on the set. That was on the bus. We did oh. an episode called, um, it, I, I can't remember the name of it right now, but we nicknamed it Death Bus because it was the one where the office takes yeah, the bus the for, bus. yeah. And um, everything kept going wrong. Brian Cranston directed it, and I felt like it, we were in, in an episode of Breaking Bad. Like it was so, it was more action like, than we ever do. Whoa. It wasn't his fault that anything was going wrong. It just <laughs> they happened to go inside. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I something I you had to be there, but it, it struck me in such a profound way that I wow. you know wet my pants. <laughs> all class, all class. Very classy. 
I'm excited to hear the, hear the kids and talk and meet the kids. And that's my, that's, I mean, I, I've been so excited all day long. I want to talk to them and see what they're thinking, what they want to do, and try to help guide them in that way, you know. If you could travel back in time and give one piece of advice to your teen self, what would it be? Oh, wow. Um, one advice to my teen self, to always practice. Always practice. Even when you want to go outside and hang out with your friends, always practice, practice, practice. Music saved my life. I loved, it saved my mind, I should say, um, because it gave me a creative outlet. It gave me a place to um, work out my frustrations, um, my joys, uh, everything. I, I just, I, I love playing the piano, and I'm so happy that I got to at such a young age because I was so drawn to it. And I would bang on it, and I would figure out a few things by ear, but once I got lessons, I was like, oh my God. It was like, like, like the magic door. Yeah. It really is the magic door. And it stays with you for the rest of your life, no matter what you do with it. It is, it gives you structure, it gives you focus, it gives you possibility. Well, now it's time for our time machine question. Okay. If you could travel back in time All and right. give one piece of advice to your teen self, what would it be? Um, don't worry about the things that you don't get. Don't worry about the plays that you don't get or the clubs that don't let you in or the school that doesn't accept you or the job you don't get because it just makes it clearer where you're really supposed to be. To be your best self. Yeah. That is my platform this year and this is what I'm sharing with my scholars is just to be your best, best self. Sometimes they don't know what their best self is and I feel it is my obligation, my moral obligation to help them realize their best self. Two things. I'll, I'll go off of hers and she said uh, to be your best self okay. and mine is to just be yourself. Oh, I love that. Be yourself. And the other thing would be if I was a teen and I could talk to my teenage self, which is what I do with my students, I, they are my teenage self, just drop the worry. Just drop the worry. It works out and worry doesn't do anything. Drop the worry and drop then just the dive in. Can I tell you about him, which you probably have already done because you're smart? Um, you found out that this man has elected, elected to live in a trailer home. I'm sorry, I have to tell your testimony because that is a testimony. He doesn't have to, but he elected to. This is a story of someone who's going from riches to rags on purpose because he has decided to be himself. Yeah, yeah. Let me do an asterisk. It's a, I live in a beautiful place and it costs money to live there. It's out of the paradigm, but I am not suffering in any way. In fact, my life has only gotten richer. So let's be very clear about that. And the riches yeah. to rags is more like riches, false riches for me to true wealth. Mm. So yeah. That's a yeah, man. <laughs> you are my teenage self. Exactly. Drop the worry. And you and Drop I couldn't even worry. live in that trailer home. <laughs> my name is Ricky Miner, and you're watching Teens Wanna Know. I'm Kate Flannery, and you're watching Teens Wanna Know. Hi, I'm Ellie Kemper, and you're watching Teens Wanna Know. Hey, guys, it's Ed Helms, and you're watching Teens Wanna Know. Teens want to know. That's not what it's called. Let me do it again. Okay. Right, we're going to start our own TV show, by yeah, the way. Yeah, exactly. Like, we are starting a show. <laughs> um, he knows I wanted to be we're Oprah. Talk to each it didn't work out. So we <laughs> yeah, do yeah. other things yeah, like this. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to be Howard Stern. I <laughs> know, oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs>